Alright, time for the explanation of the rules for Winnie the Pooh's very crappy minigame. Okay, if only you could chase away those bees, I'm quite certain I could get a small morsel of honey. Would you help me get some honey? Should I help Pooh get some honey? Sure! Oh boy. Rule explanation time. Oh, hello there, Owl. Good day, Pooh. What are you doing? Using a balloon to get some honey? Splendid idea! Allow me to offer a few pointers. Yes, we get it. You can fly. Talk to us, Owl. Ahem. Now Pooh can get honey by floating up this tree with his balloon. The honey is inside the tree hollows, not the beehives you see here. Flap, 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 flap. We get it! Land already! Lowest cutscene ever. There's quite a lot of honey in these holes. If Pooh gets too close, the bees will come out to protect the honey. If they get to Pooh, they'll pop his balloon, lock onto the bees, and swat them away. The more time Pooh has eat hollow, the more honey he can eat. There's more honey higher up, too. If jumping from branch to branch proves difficult, try the rush command. I'll give you a better explanation of what all this crap does after the minigame, okay? Because I'm going to speed it up right now, because it kind of blows completely. Okay, I think I really owe it to you guys to tell you how I did that as easily as I did. Um, basically, you don't want to jump automatically to follow Winnie the Pooh, because the platforms are impossible, more or less, and you're going to fall. And the rush command is really unreliable, too, so here's what you do. Wait for the bees to get close, lock onto them, and when you hit them with a keyblade, every time you hit them, um, if you didn't know, it just takes one hit. When you hit the bees, they'll land you perfectly where you need to go next. So you honestly don't really need to be concerned about, like, hardly anything other than making sure you lock onto the bees correctly. It's not really a tough game, that many that many game. And also, um, we got um, the nature spark from the Torn Page. Basically, after you fulfill a uh, Torn Page's mission, it becomes an item of sorts. In this case, it's a summon gem. I think this one summons Bambi, but not like that would be of any real use to us, because like I said, I don't really plan on using the summons, except for one point in the game, which is at a much later point than now. Um, anyway, Finding the next world can be a little bit confusing, although it might seem that you could go to either of those two destinations. I would choose first to warp to Agrabah, and then although there are two forks in the road, I choose the lower one regularly, um, because that's the one that has the lower battle level. And although it may look like you're heading towards a new world, that's not your ultimate destination. You're going to get sidetracked along the way. You'll see exactly how that happens. After you're sailing along in your gummy ship for a while, um, the next section of the level will start to appear, and then promptly disappear. If it disappears, you've done it right. Um, if it doesn't appear, then go back and forth until it, finally this happens. What is that? Um, it's gray. It's a round. It's... oh, it's a whale. It's hard to tell because the graphics for everything on the gummy ship just looks so much worse than the actual game. It's a giant whale! Hey, they ripped that off from Finding Nemo. He's a whale of a whale, and vicious besides. Thanks, Jiminy. Whoa, Sora, get us out of here. Donald, you sound like Jiminy vaguely now. It's too bad that you two sound exactly the same. Too late. He's going to swallow us. Oh my god. Die. It's true! I saw it with my own eyes! You sure you just didn't hear it this time? 
What difference does it make? There's a huge monster in there, I tell you. All right, suppose there really is a monster. Think we can beat it by ourselves, Sora? No problem, let's do it. Listen, there, can you hear it growling? Shh, quiet. You've gotta be careful. See that? It was just the wind making the noise. Oh man, I wish it was a monster. Hold on, what's that over there? A window or maybe a door? It won't open. Jeez, is that really all that's in here? What do you expect in a boring place like this? Hey, Sora. Hmm? When we grow up, let's get off this island. We'll go on real adventures, not this kid stuff. Sure, but isn't there anything fun to do now? Hey, you know the new girl at the mayor's house? So that's the first cutscene that actually shows you anything remotely about anything that's happened in the past. I'm pretty sure, in this game. And you only learn marginally about the past. Which I guess is kind of fine. A lot of it's left to your imagination. I don't mind stuff that's left vague. A lot of stuff about the end of this game, which kind of gets more explained, I guess, later on. Some of it really doesn't ever get explained. And I just love some of the stuff that's really ambiguous, because then it's totally open to interpretation, that means you can have all kinds of cool ideas, and then you can just go whichever with whichever ones you like uh, best, because there are so many possibilities open. Huh. <laughs> Lame, Goofy. Lame. Oh, it's Pinocchio. It's just Pinocchio. Did you know, I never knew this, Elijah Wood, as a kid, played Pinocchio in this really weird-ass, like, um, video, which was, like, teaching kids about the five senses, where he was, like, with this bootleg pirate captain called, like, Captain Nonsense. Also, what is it that Pinocchio is walking with, and holy crap, he can jump really high holding such a heavy-looking object that slows him down so much when he walks. That is one powerful puppet. Anyway, uh, Monstro, we are here in... I guess kind of a pseudo world, really. I don't know how else to describe this place. It's not nearly as long as other levels, unless you want to really explore it thoroughly. You can finish it really quickly. And also, Geppetto's voice just always sounded so off to me. I don't know why. I mean, I don't like proclaim to be an amazing voice actor myself, but I kind of assume for someone who's getting paid, like you'd find someone who sounds more like the original VA, like remotely. Yeah. Or maybe it's Geppetto like did sound like this. It's been so long that I can't remember. My name is Geppetto. I'm <laughs> oh my god, it's reminding me of that Mega Man thing, Dr. Petto. That's that's a real thing. You can look it up if you want. The old the old Mega Man cartoon, Dr. Petto. Ah, <sighs> crazy stuff. And also, how is that block going to help them at all? It won't help you unless you have a gummy ship. And for the looks of it, the thing you're on right now isn't made out of gummies. It's made out of wood. And it's broken. <laughs> You're delusional, old man. Pinocchio. Oh, man. And now we have to look for Pinocchio. That's basically, uh... This is basically the equivalent of, uh... A week of Garfield or whatever. It's more like a week of Pinocchio and you have to... So where are you going, Pinocchio? And just follow him through a boring-ass level. I don't really like Monster all that much. However, I just remembered one really good thing about this level. You're going to see that we get a really great ability here, which makes this game so much more fun. Um, you'll see what it is pretty soon. After the cutscene. If I'm not mistaken, this what is where doing? we meet. Come on, let's go back. Yeah, I think so. You know, awfully <laughs> you. Pinocchio, stop fooling around. There's no There's time no for time games. games. You're living in a game, son. Yeah, this is this is it. 
But Sora, I thought you liked games. On, an, on another note, or yes. Um, although we're inside of Whale, I don't know what's up with the inside of this Whale. Riku? I mean, people have mentioned this obviously many, many times here? before. Just but with look at this! Look at this place! Look at its wiggling, weird, weird, purpley wall. This looks more like something you'd find down at a Chuck E. Cheese's on the inside of a whale. And maybe I'll tell you what I know. And so we had that cutscene that was talking about the past, and now we cut to the present, where Riku is a jerk to Sora, and kind of vice versa. Kind of depressing. Anywho, um, we have a new Heartless to deal with. These are gonna appear without mercy. These things are search ghosts. They are a far too uh, frequent point of a very common kind of Heartless that we are going to encounter endlessly um, for um, for many worlds to come. Um, they kind of warp around. I'll tell you more about the strategies generally as we fight them. I think you're getting the idea though. They kind of teleport and then try to reappear. They can also deal surprising amounts of damage sometimes. Sometimes even killing really quickly. Um, but enough of that, we're going to learn more about this place in the next episode. See you then.